So I came across this repository called Rio today, which says that you can build web apps in pure Python. No JavaScript, HTML, and CSS needed. Well, of course, people who really like Python would obviously want to give this a try, but under the hood, I'm assuming at the end of the day, everything has to compile down to HTML, CSS, right? But the funny thing here is that it also mentions CSS is also not needed. So I'm interested in seeing how they actually replaced CSS. So the first thing they do is they have replaced a lot of elements, native elements with their own UI elements. That is how they are able to replace, I'm assuming CSS for at least these things. And then there is an example over here, right? So let me just quickly try to run this on my local system. So I did install Rio in my virtual environment with Python and let's try the Rio new command. It says in the documentation that it can set up the full project with a single command. So let's see how this works. Let's say this is um, kill HTML as a name. It's a website. And let's say I start with a tic-tac-toe. Okay, so it did create something, kill HTML over here. Now this is something I'm not really aware of, right? So I don't know how to work with this code base. And this is one of the moments where things like chat GPT, for example, the last video, in the last video, I created a very basic and stupid app. But now if I actually give my access to VS code an item, this is gonna be interesting. Let's see if I'm able to find some use case over here. So first things first, I just want to run this real quick so that I can see how this works. Just curious to see if chat GPT can understand this. How do I run this project? Yep, so it knows that you have to activate your virtual environment first and then use Rio run. Interesting, I did not know that ChatGPT would be able to, you know, it would have Rio as a thing inside its training set, right? So we obviously need to get inside kill HTML and then run Rio run. Okay, so this is how the app looks like and looks very functional. I mean, obviously it's working and it also has some sort of nice debugging tool within its interface and i don't know what this is but okay you can have certain icons which are pre-installed over here when you're building some app then for the theme you're able to change colors on the fly very cool so you're able to like sort of i don't know if you can save these changes or not but you're able to like change these colors on the fly right which is pretty cool then you can customize a little bit of radius which also changes the editor itself by the way and then you can have toggles between light and dark it's jumping which is one bug which a lot of people are in any way not able to solve in javascript also so that's fine so it jumps when you toggle that that's one and then it gives you the code snippet so i'm assuming that when i refresh this it'll just lose which is true so that's fine but then you also have something like deploy over here so one click deployment um, is coming soon i'm assuming this is how their monetization would work so over here if you check out their website by the way this is like a cool domain like Right, so three, two, one letter domains are very cool. I mean, this looks like a website that's built in Python because this clearly is not in center. <laughs> so, I mean, it might not be a bad idea to use a little bit of CSS. This over here, I think it has some sort of max width or something, right? So you can see, yeah, this website should be centered, right? It it has so many nested divs, but it's not centered. Anyway, I'm not debugging this right now, but something you can look if anyone from Rio's team is watching this video. All right, so once we have done this, let's just take a look at the code itself. I am not a Python developer myself, so I don't code in Python for days in and days out, but I can surely understand what's happening. So if we go to pages, this is where I am assuming the initial point is. So this is the logic, which probably runs like JavaScript would run. And, um, yeah, I think I have to jump into documentation because I can't understand anything that's going on in that code base. So this much we have already done. We did set up this tic-tac-toe project and we did run it and it works just fine. Now on the project setup, it says us. Tic-tac-toe is a game that consists of three cross three grid, which is fine. Each cell can be empty, contain an X or contain an O. Here's the code for the grid. So it has a def build function which I am assuming is this one. And over here, it's trying to create a column, then a text, then a grid, then a button, and then it's doing some sort of CSS properties with spacing and margin and so on, right? So everything, this is what we call as a component. These are the building blocks of your app. Virtually everything you see on the screen is a component, right? So if you go back and actually take a look at their tree also, you can see all of them. Default root component is the component. Then there is tic-tac-toe page. Then this is the column component which we created. This is the text one. This is the grid one and then every grid has these fields, right? Which is then has a card and then a spacer. Interesting. 
I mean, it's still a way to represent the UI in some way. It's just not HTML. So there's that. And it's obviously restricted also compared to HTML. HTML will allow you to do many things, you know, leave empty tags open, you know, write bad HTML. The thing with the JSX, for example, one of the things which I like with JSX is that you can only write very restricted set of HTML. You can't just do anything. So then there are components also which you can create. For example, this field component is a custom component, right? So, I mean, I don't know anything about this at the level where I would be just comfortable starting creating a new file and creating a function. So let me just ask ChatGPT about something which we can do in this, right? So let's say I ask ChatGPT, can you create a select menu that represents, uh, let me focus the actual page first, difficulty level in the game and also please make the logic in such a way that the difficulty is enforced. Keep easy, medium, hard as difficulty, right? Because their default example does not come with any sort of difficulty or anything. So let's see if ChatGPT can help me over here. And this is like, this is one of the use cases which I um, really understand that this is something which is what AI is built for, at least for people who are getting started like me, for example, I'm getting started with a technology I have no experience in, but I can make sense of the code a little bit by reading documentation, but I still would love to have somebody, you know, just create something right out of the bat. So it did add some things. Let's see if this works directly as it is. So if I copy this and if I paste this on this tic-tac-toe page and it has crashed because Rio has no select attribute. So let's just ask our chat GPT. Well, this clearly didn't work. So I mean, this is one of the problems with AIs in general. It just hallucinated the select component completely. And by the way, I'm surprised, like why does it not have a select component? Oh, it has a drop down, not a select. Let's see if GPT is able to pick it up. I don't know, like it's, it's, well, I think GPT has given up. So let's just try to restart it again. Let's see if it works or not. Okay, so it just lost my message completely. Anyway, let me just help it and tell it there is nothing like select. It's actually Rio dot drop down, right? So you can see this is how you have to use but chat GPT just came up with Rio dot select. So, I mean, a lot of times I feel like you will waste a little bit more time using these tools sometimes instead of just opening documentation directly. For example, if I was building this myself, I would actually go ahead and look like, how do you actually create a drop down? I would just not start doing Rio dot select myself, but something like chat GPT just feels like it knows everything. So it just starts hallucinating and which ends up in a little bit of more time wasted, right? But anyway, let's go back and it's still not working. So um, I don't know how you guys start to do this with a new technology, but it's clearly not working in my case. And something is clearly wrong with ChatGPT also. Screenshots are not working, I think. And it just crashes once I send screenshots across. So long way to go for AI. But anyway, coming back to the actual topic, this is neat because it's able to, you know, it has these bunch of things already which are available and you can you know choose from them but the site sort of is broken you can see that this page is pretty much like i don't know what's going on on this page yeah it's not scrollable so i'm not able to access these elements unless i increase the window size itself so yeah i mean if you really want to build a website i would still probably prefer you know native html css javascript if you want to learn and build a career in that but this is like a fun project right you can just check it out as a developer as a python developer to see how things work and maybe you know even bootstrap a few things here and there but i'm pretty sure because the data set is very small for a framework like rio even ai would struggle a little bit to help you like it just gave me a wrong suggestion but yeah that's pretty much it for this video hopefully you like this new technology check out this i would leave the link in the description do check it out and let me know in the comments what do you think about something like this would you use this or not let me know in the comments below that is all for this one i would see you in the next video really soon